Hello and welcome to another cross examine video. Uh, in this episode, I want to kind of continue this little uh, mini series that's kind of scattered throughout our videos, uh, but on the pop unpopular teachings from Jesus. Uh, we're all kind of familiar with those popular uh, or more common teachings from Jesus, like, you know, bring the little children to me, blessed are the meek, and so on and so forth. Uh, but I want to examine other teachings that come straight from Jesus that tend to get overlooked uh, or ignored completely, depending on the verse. Uh, I, I really believe that our churches would, we would have a different understanding and perspective of Jesus if we really understood him as he portrayed himself in scripture, rather than just kind of picking and choosing the teachings and the stories that we like. We, you know, we love the cuddly and comforting Jesus, but in, in this episode, I really want to examine some of Jesus' harshest words. This can be found in Matthew chapter 7. Uh, it's when Jesus says that he will tell people who think that they're saved that they're actually not. Uh, he will say to them, I never knew you. Depart from me. Now that's a scary Jesus. We don't we don't like hearing that. It's uncomfortable. Uh, but this saying, this phrase actually comes toward the end of the same sermon where he preaches the things that we know and like, like blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are the merciful, so on and so forth. Uh, the end of Matthew chapter 7 is actually the end of the Sermon on the Mount that starts in Matthew 5. And that's where we need to start to get some context for what we're going over today. So if we roll all the way back to the end of chapter 4, Matthew chapter 4, you'll see that Jesus is really ramping up in his ministry. He's called he's called his first disciples to him, uh, Simon, Peter, Andrew, and the brothers, James and John. And then he starts teaching and healing, and these huge crowds begin to follow him. Crowds from all over the place. So as this crowd begins to grow and grow and grow, Jesus takes the opportunity to teach to this massive crowd. And this is where this famous Sermon on the Mount begins. So Jesus starts with the famous, blessed are the blank sayings, and that's what we now refer to as the Beatitudes. Uh, Beatitude comes from the Latin word for blessing or blessed. So we basically call this portion of the Sermon on the Mount, the blessings, the Beatitudes. And as you flip through your Bible or scroll through it like I do, uh, depending on the translation that you're using, you'll see all of these different paragraph titles, uh, and it will give you an idea of the topics covered by Jesus in this sermon. He talks about being salt and light, Christ fulfilling the law, anger, lust, divorce, oaths, revenge, loving your enemies, giving to the needy. He teaches the Lord's prayer, fasting, storing up treasures in heaven, not being anxious, judging others, asking in the Father's name. Uh, he covers the golden rule, which is doing unto others as you would have them do unto you. Uh, he talks about knowing people by their fruit. And then we get to this conclusion toward the end of chapter 7. So if you look at all these topics covered, you can see that Jesus obviously covers a lot of ground. And this is the sermon where we get a lot of the teachings that we know and love from Jesus. I mean, look at it. Look at this list. You have salt and light, loving your enemies, the Lord's prayer, ask anything in the Father's name, the golden rule. This is the Jesus that we know and love. But it's in the paragraph about the golden rule that we get this kind of tonal shift in Jesus. He explains the golden rule do unto others. And then he says that we need to enter by the narrow gate. This is in verse 13 of chapter 7. For the gate that leads to destruction is wide, and the path is easy, but the gate that leads to life is narrow and hard, and only a few will find it. So what is he talking about here? Well, whenever Jesus talks about life and death or destruction, he is talking about salvation or the rightful judgment that we will receive as sinners. And we can know that based on the context, meaning what comes before or after the statement like this. And so Jesus isn't saying that only a few people will end up living a physical life and everyone else dies. That doesn't make sense because everyone around him is physically alive, but many of them are spiritually dead. And that sets him into the next few sections about spiritual life and death. In verse 15, he warns the crowd of false teachers, wolves in sheep's clothing. And he says that you will know them by their fruit. A diseased tree can only produce bad fruit, and a healthy tree can only produce good fruit. You won't find an apple tree producing pomegranates. And I'm not saying that apples are definitively good and pomegranates are definitively bad fruit, even though that's true. But I am saying that's what Jesus is alluding to. But in all seriousness, what, what Jesus is talking about here is the fruit from a life of someone that follows him. Now, some people will try to pull this out of context and insert other fruit passages from scripture, like the fruit of the spirit, or some passage that was written at a totally different time by a different person and say, hey, if, if this person ex is exhibiting this type of fruit, then he passes the test here that Jesus is talking about. Therefore, they must not be a false teacher. But that's not what Jesus is saying. We need to be careful 
to keep the passage that we're looking at in its proper context. And Jesus explains the context for this fruit in the verses that immediately follow this. We don't need to jump to a totally different book of the Bible to have the context of this verse explained. It's, it's right here. He says in verse 21, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and, and do many mighty works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. This is where that harsh teaching comes in that we mentioned earlier. So to summarize what we have so far, Jesus says that the way to life, eternal life with him and peace with God, that way to life is narrow. Not many are going to make it. And then he warns of false teachers and knowing them by their fruit. And then we get to verses 21, 22, and 23, where we get to see that Jesus shows that people will think that they are saved. They're doing works in his name, or they think they are. They have prophesied, they cast out demons, they do many mighty works. And Jesus' response to them is, I never knew you. Depart from me, workers of lawlessness. And then we get a further explanation of the fruit that Jesus is talking about. He says that if you obey his teachings, it's like building your house on a rock, a firm foundation. But if you don't obey his teachings, it's like building your house on the sand. And if you know anything about building, you know that you want your house on a solid foundation. And sand is not a solid foundation. And so that's what Jesus is talking about when he references fruit. It's not about good things happening in your life. Having a house is a good thing. It's about the foundation of your life. If your foundation of your if the foundation of your life is built on sand, you can have all the good things in life that you want, but it's going to get washed away. And that's ultimately what Jesus is getting at when he says that he never knew these people who claimed to do works in his name. You can do all the good that you want, and you can claim that you're doing it for Jesus, but he knows your heart, and he knows where you've chosen to place the foundation of your life. And that presents us with this harsh reality that there will be a lot of people who claim to know and love the Lord, but his response to them is going to be, depart from me, I never knew you. And that's scary, and that, that should be scary for us. And I think there's this healthy level of fear that should accompany this passage. It should cause us to examine our hearts and ask ourselves, when we hear Jesus teach on these things, do we love them and obey them, or do we kind of pick and choose and construct our own version of Jesus that we're comfortable with? Jesus does save, absolutely. And that's what he's showing in this sermon. He's showing the way that leads to life. It's him, and it's only him. And that way to life is narrow and hard. But he, and only he, can draw you into that and lead you through it. So let's take that teaching to heart, set aside our own desires, and focus on him, and put our trust fully in him. Let's choose to build our house on the rock of Christ. But hey, maybe maybe I'm missing something. Maybe you disagree. I would love to know your thoughts. Um, I would love to know if, if there's something I'm missing, if there's something that the Holy Spirit is speaking to you that I'm not seeing, or maybe you agree with me and there's there's something that, uh, again, maybe I'm missing, I'm not emphasizing enough, or maybe I'm overemphasizing. I, I want to know your thoughts. I want to know what you think about this passage. What have you learned from it? Um, so please feel free to reach out. I want to continue this discussion on Jesus' teaching here in Matthew chapter 7. But as always, thank you for tuning in. May God bless you, and I'll see you soon.